Welcome again. Right now we're at Acts chapter 21, verses 1 through 16. Now Paul heads to Jerusalem in spite of all the warnings he gets. Now this passage seems to be a little bit like, well, I hate to use the word boring, but this is very important because it sets up for a very, very important council at Jerusalem. This is one of the most important chapters in the entire so-called New Testament. So I'm very excited about this. This is kind of like a prelude to the next teaching we're going to do. So let's get right into it. So Luke is writing here, speaking about him and Paul and Silas and the crew. When we had departed from them and set sail, we came with a straight course to Kos, and the next day to Rhodes, and from there to Patera. Having found a ship crossing over to Phoenicia, we went aboard and set sail. When we had come in the sight of Cyprus, leaving it on the left hand, we sailed to Syria and landed at Tyre. For the ship was there to unload her cargo. Having found disciples, we stayed there seven days. These said to Paul through the Spirit that he should not go up to Jerusalem. So here's the first warning, okay? The disciples there, by the Spirit of God, told Paul, don't go up to Jerusalem. When those days were over, we departed and went on our journey. They all, with wives and children, brought us on our way until we were out of the city. Kneeling down on the beach, we prayed. After saying goodbye to each other, we went on board the ship, and they returned home again. When we had finished the voyage from Tyre, we arrived at Ptolemais. We greeted the brothers and stayed with them one day. On the next day, we who were Paul's companions departed and came to Caesarea. We entered into the house of Philip the Evangelist, who was one of the seven who stayed with him. Now this man had four virgin daughters who prophesied. As we stayed there some days, a certain prophet named Agabus came down from Judea. Coming to us and taking Paul's belt, he bound his own feet and hands and said, The Holy Spirit says, So the Jews at Jerusalem will bind the man who owns this belt and will deliver him into the hands of the Gentiles. Notice here, Agabus prophesies in the same manner and in the same way as some of the Old Testament, so-called Old Testament prophets prophesied. They took physical objects to illustrate their prophecy. When we heard these things, both we and the people of that place begged him not to go up to Jerusalem. Here again, Paul is warned, don't go to Jerusalem. Then Paul answered, What are you doing, weeping and breaking my heart? For I am ready not only to be bound, but also to die at Jerusalem for the name of the Lord Jesus. This is a very courageous act. Paul is saying, okay, you know what, I accept the prophecy. As you know, a lot of people would just take that prophecy and say, you know, thank you for warning me about what's going to happen. I'm just, I'm going to avoid the trouble here. I'm not going to go to Jerusalem. But Paul says, I am ready to be bound and I'm ready to even die at Jerusalem for Jesus. Verse 14, when he would not be persuaded, we ceased, saying the Lord's will be done. After these days, we took up our baggage and went up to Jerusalem. Some of the disciples from Caesarea also went with us, bringing one Nason of Cyprus, an early disciple with whom we would stay. That concludes our reading for this session. And as I said before, don't miss the next session because the next session is the most overlooked, the most misunderstood passage of all scripture in the so-called New Testament. Until then, seek God with all your heart, with all your mind, with all your strength. And if you do, you will find him. Call upon him. He will show you great and mighty things. Love you guys.